welcome to my channel. My name is Lisa Allistway, and I create a variety of inspirational and informational videos you can use and apply to your life. My guest today is Erin McCune, who is the CEO of easynet.com, which is a digital estate planning website. Erin is based in Portland, Oregon, and has 15 years plus of experience in technology and sales. She is passionate about educating and helping you capture the online logistics of your life and make it effortless and easy to see for your family if something happens to you. I will be linking her website below for your reference. Welcome, Erin. Thanks so much, Lisa. It's a pleasure to be here. Yes. Um, do you have anything you would like to add to that bio introduction? I don't think so. You did a great job. So, you know. <laughs> okay, great. Well, let's just Thank get you. right into it. Um, yeah, what yeah. exactly is digital estate planning? <laughs> <laughs> that is the million dollar question, right? Um, it, and it's a fair question because it is fairly new in our vernacular. It hasn't necessarily completely hit the mainstream yet. Um, but really your digital estate is the sum of everything that is digital in your life. Um, and so while most of us think of just social media or our websites, it goes really far beyond that, right? It's your mileage, miles on your, on your uh, airline. It's your credit card points. It's your, even your uh, state bank statements that you may get in your email. That's part mm -hmm. of the digital estate, even though the bank account itself is considered more of a traditional asset, right? Anything mm -hmm. that you receive digitally is going to be part of your digital estate. Um, it also includes things like your cell phone, your physical computer, right? Which more and more, you know, we used to have everything in a filing cabinet in our yeah. office, but today that's just no longer the case in the same way. Mm -hmm. uh, so much of what we do is online. So digital estate planning is saying, okay, we need to take care of all that. And, and the, the, the piece that so many people don't realize is that your traditional assets, they've been around for a long time. People are comfortable and familiar with them. The law is set up to handle them in a very specific way. Our online lives are in the grand scheme of things, very new. Right. 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 <laughs> you and I probably both grew up in kind of an analog world to a certain degree. Yeah. Um, and, and so people think, oh, well, it's just going to be part of my normal estate. It'll be handled the same way. And the reality is it's not. And failing to plan ahead is kind of like trying to buy life insurance after someone dies. Like <laughs> mm -hmm. it's a little too late then. So, so that's why, you know, I so appreciate you having me on and helping educate people because it's something that's so critical for them to tackle. Yes. Yes. I mean, I do everything online. I don't pay you know, I don't mail a bill. I don't put it in the, uh, put a stamp on it and put it in the mail. Everything is pretty much electronic. You right. know, my whole bills and everything is all online. And so, I mean, if something were to happen to me, what happens to all of that stuff? It's a great you know? question. So there has been some legislation that's been passed. Um, the biggest piece of legislation being uh, something called RUFATA which is a federal digital assets law. And it's been um, ratified by almost all the states at this point. And, and basically what it says is there's a hierarchy of what, who, who gets say so over your digital estate. And so you do have the ability to make some of those decisions, but again, you have to plan ahead. So there are some sites like Facebook is one. Do you have your legacy contact set up? In yes, Facebook. I do have that. Yes. Yay. Good job. <laughs> one of the few, I'll tell you. Um, Google inactive account manager is another one, right? And then iCloud has come out and said that they're adding something here in the fall. Um, but for the vast majority of sites, for the vast majority of things, there isn't anything like that. So what, what the federal legislation says is that you can designate a digital executor. You can say, I want this person to be able to stand in my shoes online and handle these things. Um, and ideally you've told that person what you want done. So they're right. right. Communication's key. <laughs> but if you don't do that, then terms of service for the website dictate. And that is not what you want to have happen. You know, those are the things that you just click through and probably don't read. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So 
how, where does EasyNet come into all of this? How does that exactly work? If I were to log on to your website, your platform, um, how does that work? So we designed EasyNet to be a comprehensive platform to organize and preserve all of your digital estate. So mm -hmm. at its core, we have a simple secure password manager that we designed for people who didn't grow up with technology to make it really easy to use. We coupled that with document storage and sharing, um, journaling, so you can capture your memories and your stories, but then also a worksheet to capture those critical life details. Everything from what's your phone password to have you hidden money in the house anywhere, if so where, uh, what accounts are on auto pay, your health information, all that, all in a single easy to use uh, platform where you choose your legacy contact. You say, this is the person I want to handle all of these digital things when when something happens. Yeah. So a good question I think to ask is why would somebody need to do this? Um, like I was explaining to my mom who my guest was going to be on the video this week and she's, she's, you know, elderly. So she was like, well, I just write down all my passwords and give it to the person. And, you know, she's definitely of that older generation. So why would we need to go through something like your platform versus, you know, the traditional method? Great question. Um, there's a few reasons. One is, um, in my experience in talking with a lot of people that written down paper, uh, some of those passwords are still correct and some of them are not. Right. <laughs> because let's face it, our digital life moves so fast, so yeah. fast that um, a lot of times the passwords aren't right. Of course, um, there's the physical logistics of it, right? If you don't live in the same city as your mom and many, many people don't live right near them, right? Now you would have to hop on a plane and go to wherever that piece of paper is. Yep. Um, in my experience, the people who write down passwords tend to reuse them. Um, that's just my experience is that almost all of them are reusing passwords, which is so unsafe, right? Because then just one of those sites has to be hacked and you've exposed everything. Right, right. Um, and, and then, you know, it's, it's really just a matter of, yes, you can, if you're really diligent and you want to stay on top of it and you want to make sure that your stuff is up to date all the time, you absolutely can piecemeal it, right? There, there are, you know, ways to put this information together in a more traditional manner and put it in a file in your filing cabinet. Mm -hmm. um, most people are not, they, they don't want to have to manually keep it up to date. You know, right. we really designed it to just kind of be in the flow of your life. So- <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't have to, you know, I, I yeah. did a presentation in a senior living community a couple of weeks ago and one lady's like, yeah, you know, I went through and I, and I put together all this information. She's like, it took me three months, but I did it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> She's like, your way would have been a lot easier. <laughs> right. Right. Maybe done in three hours versus three months. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so I know you have a personal story as with your father-in-law as to why you started your company. And do you mind uh, sharing that a little bit? Of course. So um, for, for anyone listening who hasn't taken over an estate, it is very challenging. It's, it's so much more than you think it's going to be. The average is 570 hours to settle an estate. Wow. Uh, yeah. And that's on the smaller end uh, of an estate. So yeah. When I was 24, um, my husband and I were, we were kind of playing hooky for the day. We were, <laughs> we were going to go have a nice lunch, you know, playing hooky from work. And we get this call and his dad had had a stage four aneurysm. And if you don't know the scale, like stage one is the worst headache you've ever had. And stage five is instant death. Mm -hmm. So he's at the stage four, they give him a 20% chance of survival. And fortunately he survived, but the problem is he was the sole caretaker at the time for his 88 year old mother. And so both of their lives suddenly landed on the shoulders of my husband and I just in this instant. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, you know, dad hadn't planned ahead for anything. He's 58. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Many people don't think, Oh, I need yeah. this planning right until later. Um, it, it was brutal, but it, it honestly, it wasn't until I watched my mom go through it with her mom and her dad in the same year. 
a few years ago. And it was like being one step removed from that made it easier somehow for me to, because when you're in it, you're in it, right? Yeah. You're like, yeah. you can't see anything else. It's all the, the yeah. waiting through the muck. Um, but when I watched my mom go through it, I was like, there has to be a better way. Yeah. So yeah. have you ever had to go through it? No, luckily not yet. I'm knocking on wood. Both my yeah, parents are doing sure. good. Um, but I do know there's good reason. It can be quite a gift to get your ducks in order before you pass to your family members. And um, this is one way to definitely make it more easy and effortless because you have it pretty much set up what you need to do step-by-step step in an organizational way. Yeah. Um, any other uh, whys as to why we need to do digital estate planning? I think those are pretty good, but anything else you want to add to that? <laughs> um, it, you know, ultimately, anything, in my opinion, it, there's a quote from Benjamin Franklin, where he's like, you know, every minute of organization saves an hour. Mm, I and like that. You think about, right, it, 570 hours to settle in a state, like that is what you're leaving your, your family with, is mm. this is this big mess. Um, and, and that's, those stats were mostly before people really had to deal with, with their digital assets and their digital estates. You know, as I mentioned, if you haven't done one of the, you know, with Rufata, right. If you haven't done one of the two upper ones and it falls to those terms of service, Facebook's not going to give your family access to all of your treasured memories. Apple's not going to give your loved ones access to iCloud. Mm. Um, it, there are so many horrible, horrible stories of families getting locked out of treasured memories, right? That, that yep. they thought they're like, oh, well, I, I own this. I made this, you know, I did this online. Therefore, yeah. I'd be able to give it to my family. Nobody's going to stop them, right? Yeah. But they will. Mm -hmm. that, that's the piece that people don't understand is you're literally locking your family out of mm -hmm. everything online. Mm -hmm. if, if you don't plan ahead. Yeah. Very good. And it doesn't uh, take time. It doesn't take a lot of time. I promise. I promise. I promise it's easy. <laughs> yeah. I think it's just, it's helping people just kind of like put it in perspective. Cause it can be overwhelming with you think about it. If you had to do it by yourself, but if you yeah. have like, like you, like a platform, like your company to help you just kind of outline it, I think it'd be very helpful. Um, Let's see here. So let's talk about those social media accounts for a, a moment. Cause I mean, there people are on multiple social media accounts and I know Facebook has a option where you can do a legacy contact. So if you were to pass that person has access to online, your online memories and account, but what about all the others? Cause they're not all the same, right? No, they're not. Every single one of them is different. Ironically, even Instagram is different and they're owned by Facebook. Right. That's bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> not consistent there there's there's so much lack of inconsistency today mm. in part because we've moved so fast to this digital world yeah it's just happened so fast that a lot of these websites haven't thought about it haven't you know had a chance to build something I think we're going to see it come up over the next you know three to five years as digital estate planning becomes mainstream and mm -hmm. kind of everybody goes, oh, this is something I have to deal with. This is something that I have to take a few minutes and, and figure out how I'm going to handle it, right? Whether you use yeah. EasyNet or you piecemeal it or whatever you do, you have to handle it. Mm -hmm. And and more and more people are recognizing that. So um, when you look at the different social media accounts, some of them haven't really tackled it at all. Like TikTok is new, right? It's It's grown so fast. Yeah. There's and it has security people. concerns <laughs> yeah, and that, <laughs> but, but I don't think they really have anything in place at all. Um, LinkedIn, it's only, you know, they're a well-established company. They're owned by Microsoft. It was just this year that they put into place legacy contact, uh, like where you can memorialize your LinkedIn account. Mm -hmm. Um, but, but even them, I think you have to go get a court order in order to memorialize the account. So, you know, mm -hmm. some of these sites don't exactly make it easy. It's not, it's not as simple as clicking a box like it was to, to accept yeah. the terms and conditions. Right. Yeah. Um, Twitter is an interesting case because they've essentially said, if, as long as you make it clear, it's no longer the person who died, who's mm -hmm. tweeting, mm -hmm. um, 
you can keep the account. You can keep the followers. You can keep tweeting on that account. Interesting have to have the username and password. Um, but you know, it, one of the ones, uh, Herman Cain, that account yes. was live for a while after he passed last year oh, and, wow. and they just changed the profile to say, Oh, you know, it's the friends and family of Herman Cain. And, you know, yeah. Yeah. Um, just kept it going, you know, because the reality is social media accounts now are starting to have a real value. Mm -hmm. Think about yep. it, right? Yep. People with hundreds of thousands, millions of followers, mm -hmm. there's a value to that, that you don't necessarily want to get lost. Right. Uh, Especially if you have a business or a brand and you want to continue it obviously you want to pass that on to your next of kin or family member so that they can continue your business and brand of it. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And, and like I said, digital assets are just handled so differently. Um, you know, especially if you're trying to pass along a social media account, mm -hmm. I would definitely talk to some experts, you know, attorneys that, that really know mm -hmm. what they're doing in this field. Um, so, so that you're really protecting it properly. Right. And you don't want anybody like stealing your identity or hacking that when you pass and, you know, all that crazy stuff that can happen as well. So you want to keep it protected if possible. And I don't think a lot of people think about or thinking about that right now, you know? It, it's interesting to me because I talk to people about how common it is for identities to get stolen after death. They're like, well, I, I, why would I care? I'll be dead. Yeah. Like, okay, but you're now putting all your friends and family's identities at risk. Because yeah. if your identity has been stolen and they start phishing under your name, you know, mm -hmm. or charging or billing or you can do all kinds of loved ones are probably going to know that you've passed away. But <laughs> yeah, it, it's entirely possible that that people who aren't as close to you are going to be accepting a friend request from an account that wasn't created by you. Right. And exposing their personal data. Um, yeah to your point, right? Starting to be able to um, open new new account, like not just social media accounts, but like bank accounts and charge accounts yeah. and those kinds of things. Yeah, there, there's lots of things that, that you really don't want your loved ones, you know, you take that 570 hours and now it's, you know, 800 hours or 900 hours because now they're having to deal with this other mess that also got created. Right, and I mean, and who knows where, will be five years from now, 10 years from now, as you said, technology changes so fast. It moves faster than we're prepared for usually. And we're usually having to play catch up to what's going on. You know, like I think EasyNet's kind of a catch up to all of trying to organize this technology online. Um, let's talk a little bit about your older population that's maybe not as tech savvy and um, what tips would you give them? Great question. Um, a lot of it's around security, right? Yeah. Because it, yeah. it's so easy to think you're doing the right thing, think you're being secure and, and not realize, um, you know, whether you use EasyNet or you choose to use a different password manager, I, I strongly, strongly recommend using some kind of a password manager, both because then you don't have any excuse to not have unique secure passwords for yeah. every account. But also then it's, it's just a, a habit, right? You never click on anything in the email. I don't care if you're absolutely convinced it's your bank. I don't care. Don't click on anything. Mm -hmm. in that email. Go yep. to your website, right? Go log in. If it's legit, there's going to be a little message there. It's going to mm -hmm. be, you know, really clear that, that it really was something, but you can find it from their website. You do not have to click on anything yeah. in, in an email. Um, yeah. you know, I see these phishing emails and they get better and better and better. You know, you used to be able to yeah. pick them up real quick because the yeah. logo was so ghetto. Yeah. <laughs> you Poor know, quality. it was like completely not the right logo and right. It's blurry and it's following errors and oh, yeah. Yes. And it was, it, it, it's come a long way and now it, it's, yeah. it can be really tough to tell. Yeah. Um, so security would be, would be one of the big ones there. Yeah. Um, and, and also, you know, I, I, one, one stat that has stunned me over the last few months is that in older adults, age 70 to 77, or sorry, 70 to 79, 77% of them now have a smartphone. 
We're so, all millennials now. <laughs> we're all millennials. Exactly. Yeah. We're all millennials. <laughs> <laughs> Every single one of us. Grandma's is taking selfies, you know, playing as Gen Z, you know? Yeah. Um, but, but where I'm going with that is that a lot of people that I talked to that didn't grow up with technology, they're like, well, I don't have that many accounts. It's really not that big a deal. It's like five accounts, you know? Mm -hmm. And then you start to go through with them and they're like, oh, oh yeah, I do have more than I thought. And oh, a digital I footprint. Like <laughs> Your digital footprint is, is huge, right? Yeah. The average American is over 200 usernames and passwords. Mm hmm you know, and, and when I, when I go through and I help people import stuff, especially from if they were using Chrome browser to capture their passwords or whatever, right. Which is not particularly safe. Don't do that. Um, <laughs> we, we go to import them and, and their eyes are just like big as saucers are like, how do I have 300 and something entries in there? Yes. <laughs> yes. Cause, Cause you, we just do it without thinking anymore. You go to it a site, and it's up. Like, oh, mm -hmm. just, you know, add in a password here and now you have an account set up. Mm -hmm. And next thing you know, you know, you have these accounts from a t-shirt you bought four years ago. And yeah. All these stores, credit cards, um, previous websites like MySpace that, gosh, I don't even remember my password for, but I know I had one, you know, yeah. we have uh, a lot more of us online than we realize, I think. Absolutely. That's the other thing. That's another um, quick tip uh, as mm -hmm. far as security. Google your name. Yes. And see what's out there. Um, there are a lot of sites that compile a scary amount of information about you and your life uh, mm -hmm. online. That's just, you know, in public. Visible. Right. Visible and accessible to anybody that wants to drop it's like, yeah, or something like that, you know? Yeah. Um, but most of those sites, if, if you can say, this is me, please take my information down. They're required to. Mm -hmm. And, and so, you know, the, that, take, that's a really good tip. Take whatever you can down. Um, another one is, and, and this is a little morbid. We're going to use the D word again, uh, for death. <laughs> um, don't list all the information in your obituary. Hmm. Be careful the information you put in there because you think about it, right? You've just made it super easy for someone to steal your identity when you're like, you know, here's my kids' names, here's my parents' names, here's my birth mm. date and date, you know, the date that I died. And, you know, here's where you, I was born, right? You think about all the questions that get asked. Mm -hmm. and so many of them are often just listed in an obituary. So there are a lot of not nice people that will scour those obituaries. Yes. Or yes. those pieces of information. Same thing on a public Facebook post. Be careful what you put out there. Um, right. Like those well. quizzes where they're like, what's, what was your first pet's name? And what was the school you went to? You know? Yes. I think it's fun on Facebook. You know, those quizzes don't, don't do those. Don't do that. Yeah. You think they're innocent, you know, but maybe not so much. Um, well, probably if, are, but like, there's just no reason to yeah. expose that much of yourself. Yeah. I'm, I've had several conversations with my parents as they gotten older and witnessed all like the elder fraud um, schemes that's come their way. I mean, at one point my mom was getting multiple phone calls a day, you know, all that phishing email and she's had to, you know, really educate herself on this and just, it's, it's very annoying. It's very time consuming to block and get rid of. And, um, but it's kind of, where we're at right now, you know, with technology and so on until we have better systems in place and better security in place. So there, the onus is on the individual to kind of protect themselves. Yeah. Um, so uh, talking about security, how does your platform uh, provide security? Absolutely. I mean, that's at the core of everything we do. So um, we start with uh, AES-256 encryption and that's end to end. So when you see- What is that? <laughs> I will walk you through it. Don't worry. I'm like, what? <laughs> so you think about most of the time when a company is like, oh, we got hacked and now your name and your phone number and your email and your mailing address or whatever, right? It's all out there. Yeah. Um, typically it's because the information on the server was not encrypted. So encryption is where you take a, a piece of plain text 
and you translate it, you know, and depending on the level of encryption, that's how complicated of a, of a translation it is. Um, 256 encryption is incredibly powerful. It's, you know, what's typically used by banks and, you know, the military. And um, so with us, your, your information is encrypted at that level end to end, even when it's just sitting on the server. Okay. So even if the encrypted server manages to somehow get hacked, mm -hmm. nobody can get any information that's actually usable for them. Okay. So that's going to be the first level, right? We also have two-factor authentication so that it proves that it's you. Um, mm -hmm. There's uh, an email anytime there's a login from an unrecognized device. Just to double check, be like, Lisa, yep. was it really you logging in, yes. right? Um, and then there's some other proprietary stuff that, that exists on the back end that's kind of complicated to, to talk to. But um, our website has the highest level SSL uh, certificate, which is a security you know, the, the lock that you see in the top corner, there's mm -hmm. different levels of that. Ours is the top level. It comes with a $1.75 million warranty. Um, so there, there's a lot of different layers there. Okay. And do you mind breaking down the costs of this? How much does it cost to use it? Sure. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, frankly about the cost of a latte a month. It's uh, <laughs> $6 a month or yeah, $5.95 a month if you pay monthly. Or it's a, just straight up five bucks a month if you pay annually. So it's fifty nine fifty if you pay okay. annually. Okay. So it's very affordable to get it all organized onto one site. So could be worth it, you know, compared to all the hours of trying to find that password and reset that password and, you know, make sure you're up to date with your people and so forth. And so I think it's a really good idea. Well, and most people don't realize the average American spends over 11 hours a year resetting passwords. Oh God, I believe it. I believe it. That's one of my pet peeves in life. I having to call, every three months, you got to change your password or whatever. And I'm, oh yeah, yeah. And, and so, you know, just saving yourself literally an hour every month, basically all you're doing is paying five bucks to save yourself an hour. Yeah, yeah. Put most, it in perspective. <laughs> Definitely, definitely. Um, so do you have any other tips or things that you would give to somebody uh, starting their digital estate planning? Um, for most people, it kind of feels like cleaning the garage. I, you know, so it, it's like, okay, I know I need to do this. I, I know it's important. I know I'll even feel better when it's done. Yeah. Uh, but it can kind of feel daunting to start, right? Mm -hmm. And and many of us will make excuses and be like, oh, you know, but, but you look at all the things happening in the world today and all the, the risk factors that are out there, um, take a few minutes, you know, so, so with easy net, what we say is look, do your first three things, it takes three minutes to get started. So you set up your account, which takes about 25 seconds, 30 seconds, you know, and, and you validate your email, um, download our browser extension. So then it's just automatically starting to capture your accounts and help you save those and build out your dashboard. Um, and the third one is choosing your legacy contacts. So those three things take you about three minutes and then you can pat yourself on the back be like, Hey, I adulted today. <laughs> you know, I, I did my good thing. Um, and then, and then the rest of it can be done at any point from any device, right? You can use your cell phone to capture pictures of your important documents. You can be sitting there doing, you know, watching Netflix and, and fill out your, your legacy worksheet details. But, you know, the biggest thing to remember is the things that are right off the top of your head for you are not for your loved ones in a lot of cases, right? Like, for example, do you know your mom's cell phone password? She didn't, she didn't even have one on her phone because she hates <laughs> putting it in. She's older, you know, she hates putting it. She I just leaves it. it unlocked all the time. <laughs> so no, she doesn't even have one. Right. <laughs> Same thing with but, my dad. My dad has a flip phone. He's in his eighties. So it's right. another yeah, thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, but for yeah. you, you know, do your next of kin, you know, whoever was going to take over for you, did they know yeah. your phone password, right? Probably not. They it, could probably guess it though. Well, that's the whole thing, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's entirely possible that somebody could probably guess it, right? But think about the added stress when you're already yeah, yeah, warning someone. You're already going through these like 
brutal emotional times. Yeah. And, and even though the things that you think you may think, you know, right. As far as like what medications are they taking? What's their medical insurance, right? Someone goes into the hospital suddenly um, and, and you have to handle things. It's like, okay, the things that, that normally you could even probably come up with right off the top of your head or, or relatively easily when you're in a super emotional, stressed out state, it just makes everything worse. So to be able yeah. to have that information at your fingertips is so critical. And again, whether yeah. you use easy net or you find another way to do it, make sure that your loved ones, you know, th- this is a gift. Yes. This is a gift that you're doing for your family. Yeah. Um, and you're, and you're, it shouldn't be that hard to do. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's kind of like, you know, decluttering uh, your house rather than leaving all that clutter behind for your family members to spend hours and hours of going through. Yeah. You know, it's one of the gifts you can give. Um, this is also declutter your online world, declutter and, exactly. and organize it, you know? Yeah. yeah. And and it's a gift for yourself today, right? In the same way that decluttering your physical house is mm-hmm. a gift to yourself because every time you come into your space, you're going to be like, okay, uh, like it yeah. feels better. It feels yeah. cleaner. Um, it's the same thing when you don't have to stress about, you go to a website you don't have to stress about, did I remember the password? <laughs> right. That's <laughs> right. It just auto fills in and you're like, yeah. Yeah. So on your platform, when you go on, does all your accounts come through you or do you put them in? Um, you can do it either way. We have the ability to manually add your accounts if you choose to, um, but the browser extension will automatically capture it. So the first time you go to a site and you enter your username and password, it's going to pop up. It's going to say, hey, Lisa, we noticed this isn't in your vault. Do you want to save it? And you're like, yes. So you have a CVS account. Let's bring it in. That'll show up without me having to like put it in. What it'll be is, a, is the next time you go to CVS.com and you put in your username and password, it's going to pop up. Uh-huh. And it's going to be like, Hey, we noticed this isn't saved in your using that vault. Oh, gotcha. Gotcha. It. And, and you're like, okay, yes. And I want to put it in shopping or I want to put it in health and pharmacy, you know, wherever you want to put that for yourself so that your loved ones, when, when they take over for you, they're not just getting a big long list of everywhere you've ever been. It's organized by category. Okay. And they can prioritize and they can find exactly what they need without, okay, cool. without having to, you know, having to navigate all those sites where you just bought a t-shirt three years ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like really having a, an online buddy by your side, basically every time you go somewhere, it's going to capture it. Yep. That's, that's exactly that's so it. Cool. Very and then, cool. and then the next time you come back to cbs.com, it's going to autofill your username and password for you. Oh, very cool. Now, does it also do all your medical stuff too? Uh, or just, this is all like, what do you want? <laughs> Uh, like your vaccination status card, could it be in there and things like that? I have mine in there. Yeah. <laughs> I have mine saved in my, in my easy net account. So okay. you can save documents, you can save photos, you can share them easily. Okay. Um, you know, we, we've really worked hard to try to, you know, think of everything where we can. Yeah. And, um, so you can put yeah. your will in there. You can put everything in one place. Yeah. So your documents are similarly organized by category. So, you know, you click on estate planning, there's my well, there's my trust, there's, you know, those kinds of documents. You click on health, there's my vaccine card, there's my daughter's vaccine card, you know, Mm -hmm. all the different pieces there. Okay. Fantastic. Very cool. Um, Do you have anything else you would like to add that's pertinent to this topic? I just really appreciate you having the forethought to have me on and to talk about this because it is such a critical piece. And and I hope that the people that are watching take, you know, take that three minutes, figure it out, you know, however you're going to handle it. Um, you know, don't, yeah, Yeah. it's a gift. Like you said, yeah, very important. And it's, it's a gift to get this organized and planned ahead of time for your loved ones. So I appreciate what you're doing. I think it's, I think it's awesome. And um, I'm so happy you were able to come on my channel today. And I thank you for that. And um, if you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and share the video and uh, also uh, hit the bell to be alerted when the next videos drop. Thank you, Erin. Thank you.